Having looked at other LED head torches on eBay, I thought, let's take a look and see if we can find the cheapest USB rechargeable LED head torch. And the one I found has strangely doubled in price since. Not because it's good though. Uh, super bright waterproof head torch headlight LED USB rechargeable headlamp fish common keywords. Uh, it says US $8.69. The price I paid from the same listing was $4.49, so it's pretty much doubled in price. They are available if you look at the... I'll provide a link, and then you can follow it until you find them. Uh, they're available quite cheaply. I wouldn't spend more than $5 on one, even if you buy one at all, because they're not very good for a reason I shall show you. I mean, everything's there. A lot of design has gone into it, but it's just crap. So here's the little unit, it's very small, and you think, well that's quite good, it's nice and compact. It comes with a little head strap and a charging lead. The packaging was pre-crushed, but that happens. You can't really hold that against it, or I should mention. Let's get the uh, shiny exterior off. Let's pull the packaging out here. It does say... SOS press for a second. You can press that for as long as you want. Hopefully it's not a real SOS situation because it doesn't happen. Uh, front blast economy flash one and flash two. Let's go through the modes here. Blast. Put out a decent intensity, not mega intensity, but pretty good. Says it all put, puts out 20 lumens uh, for five hours and 50 minutes. Economy, it doesn't have, it. this doesn't actually relate at all to this thing because... I'll just chuck it out of the way. The next press goes to red, and it's interesting because the red LEDs are actually underneath the phosphor, which is quite neat. So it's got full intensity, red, alternately flashing, white, white, red, red, white, white, red, red. That is it. That's all you're going to get. The headband, let's stick the headband on. Uh, no, let's not. I actually bought two of these. Well, I'll stick it on, but I can tell you in advance that I have tested my huge bonds. And it does fit, but there's a good reason to put it on. I shall put it on. I can always pull it off afterwards when I want to take this apart. And I will be taking it apart, as you as you know, because that's really what happens here. So the headband goes on, just sort of like working it around these little lugs. It's currently set to the maximum. I'll just check that. Yeah, it's pretty much set to the maximum. We'll give it the big head test. And with a beanie on, that's pretty good. But here's where it all goes wrong. Are you ready for this? Let's take the exposure off here. Let's focus down to about here in the middle of the bench. So that's where the uh, exposure is actually working now. Turn this light off. And I'll turn this light on. And this is me looking directly at my fingers right now. Can you see the light? Hold on. What if I bring my fingers down here and I tilt my head forward so my eyes are like at the top of the glasses and the light is just barely approaching the fingers now? In other words, it's not aimable. The light literally is above your field of vision. Bring the light back. It's going to get very bright shortly. There we go. So... As an actual LED head torch, it's useless. I can elaborate on that. Let's bring it in this. Let's do a little doodle. Not much of a doodle. Uh, pen. Where is a pen? Pen is... I've, I've misplaced the pen. Give me a moment. I'm not very organised. Oh, tell you what, I'll just use this dinky little pen. So, okay. Imagine this is a path. And imagine that's you standing the path... Uh, and you've got your head up there, and you've got the little headlight on, and it's pointing the light out. Like that. Now, most of the light will be above your line of sight, and it's about... Oh, look at that, it's completely swamped out. I'm sorry. Um, the distance here... Before it actually makes the ground is about 20 foot, which is about 6 metres, which is, given the intensity of the light, it's not like it's going to... It's not going to be useful at that distance, you know? It's not letting you see what's directly in front of you. It's just... I don't know the purpose of this light. I really do not know what was going through their mind when they decided to fire the light straight ahead. Because if you look at other lights, like, for instance, my current favourite, which is this little dinky one, 
Um, it's anglable. It's got the USB rechargeable. Well, the, the anglability is the main thing. This one might have been useful if it was anglable. But anyway, let's open it and see what's inside. Let's see what size of battery it's got, or at least what size of battery it says it's got. I'm guessing the front on the screws. What does that reveal? That reveals the uh, cob, which looks a lot smaller when you take that big lens off. That lens is pretty impressive. Um, notice the... If I zoom down in this, it's an interesting cob, actually. But it's just the cob on its own. It's not got the circuitry. The intensity is all over the place now I've done that. Uh, if you look at the cob... Actually, let's bring the cob up and we'll focus on it here. Is that going to work? If you look at the cob... You can see it's got the white LEDs, well, the blue emitters under the phosphor around the outside, and it's got the red in the middle. Now, if I turn it on, you can see the outer ring. Can you see the outer ring? Not really. Uh, and the red inner ring, that's ultimately it. The red LEDs, there's about five of them, will not stimulate the phosphor because they're too uh, long a wavelength. The phosphor has to be stimulated by a shorter wavelength. Does anything else come out here? Uh, just that cob, that's it. Right, let's take the back off. I may need to use a thinner screwdriver for this. Let's use this one. So hopefully they made up for this. Can they make up for it with anything? This light originally appeared in a listing for another light, and it was one of the cheapos that's used to actually pack out the listing and make it look as though things are a lot cheaper. The cell's not bad looking. Here's the circuit board. Is the circuit board held in by screws? Yes, it is. I won't just prize it out then. There's the rubber housing, which just actually folds around it. So the only solid bit here is uh, the plastic front and the plastic back with a rubber gasket. That's quite interesting. I mean, it, it looks as though a lot of design has gone into this. It's just that they've just kind of not really <sighs> done it too well. That LED, oh that LED does come through, it sits in a little ledge, it comes through like this. Can I get this battery out just to see if there's anything printed on it, if there is anything printed on it? It has no protection, another one did have protection. Uh, do I have anything soft that I can gently spudge this out with, without, oh you know what? Did you see that? Oh I've just perforated the lithium cell. That's not good. Uh, right. Well, that's just got a bit awkward. Is this cell going to go up in smoke? Where's my explosion containment pie dish? The explosion containment pie dish is, is not handy. Oh, right. One moment, please. I'll be back shortly. The battery is out. It had a slight dink just at the back here. I just basically slit the package slightly, but it's not gone into the actual, well, as far as I can see, it's not gone into the sort of insulation layers and the foils themselves. So it should be absolutely fine. I have connected a lead to it and I've connected it to this little power bank module and I've got an LED light running from it. So I'm going to discharge it fully and then I'll recharge it again fully because I don't think it's going to be affected by that slight leak. And then I'll see what the capacity is and I shall leave it in the description down below. The circuit board itself, let's take a closer look at this. Let's just nudge up a tiny bit. We've got the USB supply coming in. We've got a chip called an LTH7, which is the charge control chip. It's got a 1K resistor leading to two LEDs. I do have the schematic for this. I'll show you it shortly. We've got the 162. That's 1620. 1600. That's 1600 ohms. That's setting the charge current for the lithium cell, which is connected to the red lead and the black lead. The black is notable for being the common around the circuit, including the common to LEDs and the button. More of that later. The control of the light is from this, you know, generic custom program chip. It's got a button going to one of the inputs. It's got a little diode and capacitor for creating its own supply. I'll show you that in the schematic. And then it's got these P-channel MOSFETs, which is odd with their uh, pull up resistors to keep them turned off and then a 2 ohm resistor going out to one LED, that's presumably the white one, and then a 5.2 ohm resistor going th out to the red LEDs because they get a lower voltage and therefore need a higher value resistor. Right, that is the circuitry 
Anything else worth mentioning that? Not really. Here is the schematic. So here's the supply coming in from the USB connector to charge it. The 5 volts goes, because it's blocked from uh, flowing back from the lithium ion cell by this LTH7 chip, which is the charge control chip, the 5 volts goes straight to a resistor and then two LEDs. One LED is a red LED, which is a forward voltage of 2 volts. The green LED, which shows it's fully charged, has a forward voltage of 3 volts. When the unit is charging, this chip will pull this uh, connection down to the 0 volt rail, and that means that the red LED is lit, and because that then means the voltage cross the, between the bottom of this resistor and the 0 volt rail is about 2 volts, the green LED can't light because it needs higher that voltage to light. When it's fully charged, the red LED turns off and the current then finds its path through the green LED, and it just means a single wire from the chip can control red and green. There's a 1K6 resistor, which I calculated out as providing a charge current in the region of 700 milliamps, which seems quite high for this little uh, battery here. But you know what? That's, uh, that's what it is. It, the, with these set of charge circuits, I've found the voltage start, the current starts off at the full current and then it gradually settles down. Here's the lithium cell, the one that I've burst. Let's, uh, let's put a little drip next to it because I've made a big hole through it. Now it's dripping electrolyte everywhere. It smells great. Probably not good for you, but not to worry. Oh, talking of things here. This uh, little flap, the little rubber flap covers a USB port. It's a good fit and it's really easy and it hinges in. That's quite a nice design feature. Shame about the rest of the light, really. Here's mystery chip. The standard 8-pin chip could be a product. Paduk could be anything. Uh, S4 diode and a little capacitor here. This little capacitor here, which I would guess typically it's going to be 100 nano or something like that. Although it's very hard to tell because they never mark them. And you get really high values in these tiny little capacitors these days. You also get extremely instability in these tiny little capacitors these days. So that's the uh, plus voltage going to this chip. I suppose that that also could uh, regulate when the chip's going to actually cut off, when the battery's running low. The chip may have voltage sensing built in. They may have tweaked that with that diode, or it may just be to isolate it from the supply because the pulsing, flashing supply when it's doing its strobe mode could actually cause instability and cause the chip to crash. The chip has a, a button going to the negative rail. You push the button. This must be pulled high internally through a resistor inside the chip to actually keep that uh, in the sort of positive state when you push the button it goes negative and that uh, switches through the modes. The output, and I should actually put a wee dotted line down here and put X2 because there's two outputs which are both identical. Uh, we've got what appears to be a P-channel MOSFET which is really strange. It's odd to see the MOSFET switching to the positive rail. It usually switches to the negative rail. But it's marked 23BL. I did not have any joy looking that up. I had a quick search, not a deep search, but nothing immediately came up for, for 23BL. Technically speaking, it could be similar to an A1 SHB, which is the P channel version of the A2 SHB. The mystery brother of that uh, popular MOSFET. The 10K resistor is on the gate of the MOSFET and it pulls it to the positive rail with a bitch with a P-channel MOSFET keeps it pulled off. It's the op complete opposite of the normal uh, where if you had an N-channel MOSFET down here it would have a resistor going down to the negative rail to keep it turned off. It's the opposite with the P-channel. When this uh, pulls low to turn this MOSFET on the current flows through this 2-ohm resistor. There is the other resistor in there which was, where have I put the thing? Which was a higher value resistor, 5.6 or something, I think it was. It's actually underneath my notepad. Okay, uh, 5.2. I think that's a 5. It looks as though it could be a 5, but it could also be a 6. It's not very clear. But anyway, it's a res I could measure that, couldn't I? I could measure that, and then I'd know exactly what it was. Although, at these low values, uh, it, you have to consider the resistance of the leads. So let's put the leads together. It's showing about point, say half an ohm. Let's go across that and see roughly what it is. Is it point five ohm or six ohm? I don't get anything. Oh, here we go. Six 
ohm by the look of it. I would say, yeah, 6.2 ohm then, maybe. Okay. I'm guessing that's the red LEDs. But anyway, that resistor limits the current through the LEDs. If you wanted to hack one of these, if you want to make it dimmer, to be honest, there's no point because the light is splashed out from that cob. It's just splattered out everywhere through the lens. Where is the lens? Have I misplaced the lens? There's the lens over there. This plastic lens uh, really splashes it, focuses it, makes it look quite big, but it just splatters the light out everywhere and makes it completely useless, to be honest. Maybe these would find use, particularly if it's got the white mode and it's got the red mode, maybe it would find use in a bike, but it's got the headband. If it clipped onto a bike, you could use it in white mode at the front of the bike, although it's going to just splash light everywhere which might be a good thing for visibility. Um, and on the rear, it could be the red mode, which just splashes light in all directions again, which again would be good for visibility. Maybe that's the pedigree of this light. But there we have it. It's otherwise nicely designed, but altogether it's just a pile of crap. It's not suitable for use as a head torch, unless there's some specialist application that involves lighting lots of stuff above your head. It's very strange. It's a shame almost because it's been so well designed. The case is nice. The battery seems as though it's going to have a good capacity when I've tested it. Uh, the circuit board is nice enough designed. It's an interesting cob array with the dual uh, LEDs in it, the, the white on the outside and the red on the inside. How many chips are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight white on the outside, five red on the inside. It's just, um, it's strange that, you know, it's just... Uh, it's kind of pointless because it lacks that one thing that would have made it so useful, and that's the ability to angle it down on the headband a bit. I suppose that if you had one of these and you were having problems with that, you could put a bit of foam or something at the top here so it did actually angle it down a bit when you were wearing it in normal use. I'm not sure how that comfortable that would be. But there we go. Uh, eBay's cheapest LED head torch is cheap for a reason.